Hey, what's going on, everybody? Welcome to the Thriving Minds Podcast with your host, Walter Parada, where we strive to provide you with empowering talks so you can live to thrive. I hope you find yourself in the right frame of mind, focusing on all the things within your control. All right, so today's episode, we're going to be talking about moving beyond telling to explaining. So for most of our lives, we've been told what to do. We're given information and are just expected to know how to use it, to know how to apply it, and for things to just turn out well. And when they don't, the people that tell us what to do get upset and might question our abilities in comprehending the information that we were given. What gets lost in all of this is it's simply not enough to tell somebody what to do, to just expect them to put everything together. We got to remember that the person that's being told what to do, being fed that information, they might be hearing it for the first time. So it's unreasonable to think that just by telling them once, it's enough to get them going. We all process and interpret information in many different ways, but that's forgotten because of that standard way of everyone should know how to learn like this by just being told what to do. And if we remember, there are many different learning styles. Several ways that people comprehend information. So the people that are telling others what to do or give specific information, they've probably been exposed to it several times where they understand it. What's probably forgotten about is that the person that's given out the information, they probably didn't get it to where they comprehend what was said to them the first time. If they did, then they're the outlier. They're that unique individual that gets it on the first try. This can come from our parents, our teachers, our peers. If in the workforce, our managers or supervisors, they're coming from a higher level of experience in whatever it is that they're giving out. They're coming from a higher level of experience in whatever it is that they're giving out orders or directions to. For them, they have consistently ingrained or become accustomed to what they're saying. Maybe this is driven by ego that makes them feel powerful, or maybe they've just forgotten about how it feels to take on something new and not get it on the first try. Continuing down that path of just expecting somebody to follow exactly what you say or exactly what you mean sets up everyone for mistrust and more likely to fail. Just think about it. So the person that is telling others what to do and everybody that's receiving that information is not getting it to what the expectations are, can be seen as not smart enough. Maybe what was said and the expectation was not clearly communicated, and for somebody to realize that, it requires an honest self-assessment to realize they fell short in providing the right context and clearly outlining what they were looking for out of others. But most people... They don't recognize this because it can feel uncomfortable. It makes the ego unsettled that wants to fight off that it's not me, it's them that just doesn't get it. If that's the reaction to when others are not doing what you want them to do or what you expect them to do, then that's a good indicator that maybe you need to go beyond telling somebody what to do. And think about it from the audience's perspective, the recipient of that information. Having this sort of expectation of not understanding the information on the first try can make somebody feel inadequate, that they're not sharp enough to understand what they're being told. This then affects a person's confidence and motivation to really want to do well. And this is where that fixed mindset really starts to take over and things start to unravel for the worse, where the thinking becomes, well, if I don't get it right away, then I'm not meant to. And I'm just going to do what's comfortable, do what I'm good at. And this then leads to looking for what's easy, which makes a person less resilient, impatient, and less developed. And this comes from the person that they're trying to get the direction from or some sort of approval from was not compassionate enough to understand their needs and how they process information that works for them. So that approach of just telling somebody what to do pins both sides against each other that makes it feel like getting by is the goal. 
where it's short-term focused. To overcome this, we need to go beyond just telling, and that requires explaining, teaching, showing, and coaching. And all this can be off-putting because it seems like a lot more work and time is required to do so, which is true, but it's not that much more difficult. It just requires thinking through things a lot more to where you can properly provide the right context to teach concepts, and this lays the foundation for a greater understanding and comprehension of what's being talked about. The first step in all of this is shifting from telling to explaining to teaching, showing, and coaching is that it requires patience and understanding. Know that the information that you understand that you're passing on to somebody else will probably be something new or something that they're not yet familiar with enough. So avoid comparing yourself to those that you're giving the information to. Just because it takes them a little longer to catch on does not mean that they're insufficient. A great example of this is a parent telling their child to go clean their room. A parent's perspective is a lot different from a child's one, so each one's approach to cleaning the room is relative to their expectations. A parent is probably going to want things very neatly organized, where the bed is made, the clothes are put away, toys are in the proper area, and the floor is clean. A child's perspective is one where it's more about having fun. So the expectation is a clean room that is good enough where you can walk around in it. This might mean having things on the floor, but can step over them to maneuver through. A natural reaction to this is that the parent gets frustrated and angry with the child for not doing what they were told. But in reality, they were doing what they were told. They just had different expectations of what was said. This is where telling is not enough. It's a disservice because it's living things subjective to another person. And as we all know, we have different perspectives or slightly different perspectives that influence how we go about things. In a situation like this, instead of getting angry at the child for not doing what you expected them, it should be a period of reflection to assess as a parent. Did I clearly communicate the expectation of what I wanted? Did I show them exactly what a clean room looks like and how to do it? You know, things like showing them exactly how to make the bed, how to put the clothes away, where to put the toys in, how exactly to keep the floor clean. By doing this, you clearly show them exactly what needs to be done. And this then makes both the parent and child in sync with what was communicated. This is where the patience and understanding are going to allow you to take a step back and say, you know what, that was on me. It's realizing that the expectation as a parent is different from the expectation of a child. And now it's time to walk the child through how the room should be cleaned. This then clearly connects the instructions that were communicated with the demonstration that cements comprehension. You know, this is something that is clearly lacking in so many different parts of our everyday lives, whether it's in school, whether it's work, whether it's in sports, or, or whatever it might be. Just think about it. In school, it might seem like it's enough to expose students to different array of subjects and information and think that that's adequate enough for students to excel in college or in the workforce or personally. For the most part, they're being told what to do. They're given instructions, and then they follow through on it, and they do it relatively to the best of their interest. Not of their ability, but of their interest. And the more disinterested that they are in whatever it is that they're being taught, the more they can be viewed by parents and teachers as they're going to be struggling through life because they're not taking school seriously. Well, they're not taking school seriously based on what you've seen, what you've been through. Maybe they think they are taking it seriously. They probably have not experienced what you have so it's unreasonable to think that they value what you do. Each person has their own priorities based on their interest, and ridiculing them for not having the same as yours just alienates us from one another. A great thing to do to get your audience 
to become interested in what you're talking about is to explain the why. When a person understands the why for whatever it is that we do, it gives a lot more meaning and understanding that really drives home the point that you're trying to get across. Even though a person may not agree with the explanation, it gives a sense of open dialogue that builds trust. In the case of a parent going over exactly how to clean the room, understanding the reason behind it makes the child more empowered that helps them really think things through and become more concept oriented instead of just specific information that they're focused on. So the parent explaining to the child the importance of cleaning the room further drives home the point that helps the child build initiative. Having a clean room makes things a lot quicker to find, less chance of losing things, and safer to walk through as things are not in the way that could be a trip hazard. This then gives them reasons to do things that goes beyond just cleaning the room. And this can help them see chores less like a pain and a little bit more accepting of doing it. You know, I can remember distinctively the difference between high school and college, where high school was a bunch of information that I was told. It was all about arriving at one correct answer, doing whatever you're told and just falling in line. And then in college, once I got to my major, it was evident that the professors would really teach, explain, and provide very insightful demonstration that really drove home the point, even with real life scenarios. For me, this was a time where I really furthered my thinking to find reasons why I should or shouldn't do something. And this really gave me the sense of, I can figure this out. And it shows in the exams, because in high school, it was a lot more multiple choice. You had everything kind of spoon fed to you. And it really didn't force that way of reasoning through questions. But in college, it was a lot more explain your answers. And this opened up a world of possibilities for me. So when I cross reference how a classmate of mine responded to a same question, I noticed that they had different reasoning behind what they explained. This really showed me that there are multiple right ways of doing things. I got out of that mentality of correctness because that's kind of what I was told, what I was conditioned for. And when you can explain yourself, explain the answers or explain why you chose what you did, it forces you to think things through, to come up with viable solutions and less worried about doing things wrong. This then trickles down into asking more questions that leads to seeking information out on your own that really drives home the point of comprehension. So when you can explain yourself or explain a topic that you're discussing, it shows a higher level of understanding more than just repeating what you were told. High school is really structured, and I understand, is to provide a framework so people can get a good foundation in education. But it was closed-minded in a sense where there was very little wiggle room in what constituted acceptable. If a student tried to explain themselves why they did what they did, it was seen as looking for excuses. But in college, there was a noticeable difference that when a professor questioned the student, it was more to encourage them to open up, to reason through their choices. At first, I was kind of taken back because I thought, is the professor trying to belittle a student, kind of trying, you know, make them to fall in line, to just sit there and listen? But later I realized that the professor merely was trying to get the students to have discussions, not merely just taking a bunch of information, you know, to move away from being passive and participate in what was being explained. I think he almost wanted a rebuttal as well, because it opens up room for great debates great discussions, great dialogue. I find this so interesting that only up until that point, I was really exposed to this type of thinking. This helped me to realize that there is an art to it. And these professors would go beyond teaching, would go beyond explaining, and would actually coach students. For those of you that played sports or have had some sort of influential mentor or instructor, I think we realize that they play a significant part in our personal development because they help us see things in whatever we do, and that applies to other areas of our lives. They'll give assessments to how we handle adverse times, and this helps to self-assess 
because getting that third person point of view makes us a little bit more conscious later on of, did I handle this properly? Could I have responded better in this type of situation? And if so, how? It helps us to step outside of ourselves where we're not so sensitive to uncomfortable things about ourselves and we'll use that to make improvements to what we do and how we handle ourselves. And many of us need this where we have a person that we can talk to to get a second opinion. They're more of a supportive guide instead of a restrictive authoritative figure. It gets us to open up a lot more when we can kind of talk about certain scenarios and ask them, hey, what do you think of this? And their response of saying, you know, that's one way of doing it. Another way could be trying this method or going this route, as opposed to that restrictive authoritative figure would say, no, that's the wrong way of doing it. You should have done this or it's, it's best to do this. This is the right way to go about it. You know, the two approaches obviously are very different because a supportive figure is there to develop and build you up that naturally builds your confidence in your decision that's going to help you going forward with greater conviction and less afraid to make mistakes. With that authoritative figure, while they can help make improvements, they're going to be limited. That limits what can be done because of the constant thinking of not making the wrong decision, not doing the wrong thing that makes us more hesitant, less trusting ourselves, that can slowly erode confidence. So the supportive guide is more of that teaching, explaining, showing, coaching, all centered around patience and understanding. It's getting a person to understand concepts, to ask questions, to self-assess, and put what they learn in their practice all through bite-sized chunks that allows them to excel with greater independence. That authoritative figure is more about telling their subordinates what to do, not thinking, just doing what they're told, to not question and fall in line based on hierarchy. This leads to being more and more dependent on authority, needing structure just to function. It keeps people trapped that stifles what can be done. Nick Saban is a retired college football coach that's won seven national titles six with the Alabama Crimson Tide, and one with the LSU Tigers. And he said his approach to coaching has changed over the years. He's been so used to telling players what to do and how to do it, which has led to a lot of players having success on the field. But over the last several years, players have not responded as effectively to just being told what to do. And he now explains the whole reasoning behind that. And he says this has, you know, made it a lot more relationship oriented that gets the players to open up more. You know, one of the great questions that was asked of him was, how has he stayed so relevant in college football, especially with these teenagers? They're anywhere from 17 to 23 years old while he's in his 70s. And he simply said, it's the ability to adapt. If not, you'll get left behind. And he references the dinosaurs that they're no longer here because they were not able to adapt. So the name of the game is being willing to change, to change for the better. To know that what once worked may not be as effective right now or later on. And obviously this can be a little difficult to do since most of us have been taught in a certain way. So usually we've been told what to do and then we pass that on to other people. We just tell others what to do. But now we recognize that there's more effective ways to relay what we want to get across. Where we explain things, where we teach it, show it, coach them up. Maybe this is an uncomfortable topic to entertain, but coaching is not only for sports. It's not only for those in high-stake leadership positions. Coaching is about helping people achieve what they're after by providing the proper guidance, feedback, and support. And it's not solely focused on telling someone what to do, but rather asking them the right questions so that the person that is being coached arrives at their own answers and they can explain their way through it, understanding their reasoning behind it. This approach properly builds up each individual to really grow into themselves 
and be more resourceful, be more accountable and disciplined that helps them self-regulate. This gets away from being so focused on specific information that they were told, being bound by what they know, and gets them to operate in other areas that they're unfamiliar with because of their ability to understand new concepts and apply that to different areas. Explaining, teaching, showing, coaching, all this gets a person to reach new heights because they'll develop that initiative to lead the way instead of a person dictating that. When a person is not bound to only what they know, there's so many great possibilities, but that comes from entering new territory, being willing to take risks, to make mistakes, and rebounding from them, to always gain something out of each situation. But all this must be shown in progressive steps. Telling does serve a purpose. It's vital because it provides good structure to help a person know what exactly to focus on. So the younger we are, telling is a good way to go, but after a certain point, there needs to be a step beyond that to develop a person's thinking so they can understand and not just remember information that they're told, but those ideas and concepts that can be translated into other areas. Just think about the Wright brothers. You know, they were credited with inventing and flying the first airplane. They weren't engineers, but they did have a background in running their own bicycle repair shop. And that allowed them to see things in very unique ways. Because they were their own bosses, they had to take the initiative to successfully run that bike shop. And this led them to asking questions, to new ideas. And then they figured out through the same concept of how a bike pedal works, they can make a large object fly. And that gave way to aviation. So the next time you find yourself not understanding what somebody's telling you or the instructions that you're given, open up and ask, can you further explain what you want? Can you let me know the expectations so I clearly understand what I'm supposed to be doing? And vice versa. If you're the one that's telling somebody what to do, take it a step further and explain why they should do it with relevant background information to teach them, giving them a demonstration so it really becomes cemented, the idea, and not just the specific information. I can remember there was this older guy in the agriculture setting I was in. All his work in life, that's what he did. And there was an issue in the nursery, and he says to me one day, hey, can we just spray sulfur on the nursery trees? And I asked him, well, why would you spray sulfur? And he says, I don't know. But that's what we always did to treat the trees back then. I'm sure there was a good reason why sulfur was sprayed previously. But we needed to understand the reason behind it. And not just do what's always been done. That's part of that limited thinking where he was just doing what he was told. And really didn't understand the concept. But merely saw the information as a quick fix or a, or a temporary remedy. By explaining yourself, demonstrating it. It clearly shows that you understand what's going on and that's going to help people in that same way where you're expanding your thinking that can lead to many great ideas and solutions to very complicated problems. And as you go with this approach, you'll see that it's not that much harder to do. It just requires a little bit more time and effort, but like anything else, over time, it becomes less and less difficult. Consistently leave room for open-ended questions as this is going to help think things through better and be more engaged in whatever you do. Move beyond telling others what to do because it limits what can be achieved and instead teach and coach to give rise to others' greatness. I really hope you enjoyed this episode. If you're interested in more topics like this, become a Thriving Minds member at www.thrivingminds.live It's your personal development resource so you can build that right mindset so you can live to thrive. Alright, until next time.